Here we go with the mailbag. It's from Johnny Castro. Sid Barry's D. Malenko is the subject. Hey, guys, I have a softball for you all this week. My question is about Sid. In a shoot interview, Sid Barry D. Malenko. He tells the story of how the Macho Man likes seeing Sid treat Malenko as a jobber and how Malenko is one of the more boring wrestlers on the roster. I know you guys always put over Malenko. What are your thoughts about this? Disco, the clip is short. Um, I'll wanna, be per- this, this is my honest Do you want to see the clip? Time. Do you want to hear it? No, no it's just, just another guy burying somebody. I don't know. Do yeah. you want to play it? Conan, have, it's hard. Have you How seen long it? is the clip? Joe? I haven't seen it. He says uh, it's short and started at uh, 48 seconds. All right, let's see. He's not the only one. Uh, Dean, I know you guys, <laughs> you know, we're cool with him. No, Dean is a here's, here's the thing. The guys like I, Doug. I, was, I, yeah. I guarantee you that I was not a fan. I was not like a fan of like Dean Malenko the way he worked. Mm-hmm. And I guarantee that Dean Malenko was probably not a fan of the way I worked. We have two completely different, like, like he's, he's a technical wrestler, not a lot of expression. I'm a flamboyant, you know, not so technical, but like I'm an entertainer. You know what I'm saying? So I, I like Dean was good if, if like, because he had a lot of people with personality around him. So like Eddie worked with Eddie, he worked with Ray, he worked with Jericho, he worked, you know, but like if you had like a roster full of Dean Malenko's, they, it would be kind of like a, like a boring type, type of crew, you know, like, like for, for their, their TV personas. But the guy's an excellent technical wrestler, and because he was so good at it, he was like always at the top of whatever you know, like the food chain. Like he was a cruiserweight, he was a cruiserweight champion because he was the best worker, and that's that's the way we kind of treated the guy, you know, like when when he was uh, when he was a cruiserweight champion. All right, but he's um, not. Uh, so, Sid, Sid's not the only one though. I know Duggan has buried him, Rick Steiner, Bret Hart, and I think it's because those guys. Just see him as a little guy, you know. They're both, right. yeah, you know, or they're all kind of, which old is kind business. of like ridiculous because he's a second generation guy, yeah, and he's a great technical wrestler. So it's like burying the guy is not like I would never bury D Malenko. I just say we have completely different styles. And I was not a fan of like that. Like I would never work like that type of wrestler. You but know? could you see if so, you were, you know, if it was your job to go up to Jim Duggan or but, 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 Rick but, but, Steiner example, and say, uh, but here's, but here's, but here's the perfect thing. Yeah, me and him. Like people look at me, they say that's my best match. It's one of them. Probably. Like we working against each other is a good con. You know, you know what I'm saying. So I enjoyed working with the guy because it's a good contrast of styles. We had a good match at Bash. I think we had the best match at Bash of the Beach. Was you the best or the second best? Ray and yeah, Psych- the second Ray best. And psychosis. The best. Ray and Psychosis were on that card. <laughs> oh yeah, Ray and Psychosis got that. Yeah, but I think if the, you I had think third was best, mine was the best. Leti- mine was the best. The best. Yeah, then but, the Ray one. Then your no. Conan versus <laughs> Ric Flair that night was. Uh, yeah, that was the best one. Conan got knocked out by a, a shoe. By the way, <laughs> well, I think. Conan, did you out. see the Did you see the Hoobie Bot spot? That, that that I retweeted. Oh, where he? Oh, yeah, where he tried to do the back. Yeah, and then he went and did it again yeah. and just made him look like. <laughs> yeah, I tried to <laughs> grab just, him and he, yeah. I tried he to grab him. And he anyway. kicked me. Yeah, yeah right. right. He, he, he did kicked me so he anyway. could do it again. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. There was also someone uh, posted like a gif of Conan, a Conan and Hoovy match, and Conan. It's every it's every power move you do to him. So it looks like you're just beating the shit out of him for about 40, 50 seconds, you know? It's great stuff. Yeah. All right, here's the, the sick clip. Right, <laughs> it was abuse. And me and him were working with uh, Dean Malenko and maybe it was uh, um, Chris Benoit, but one of that group of there. And um, this is when I was getting the count number up to go against um, – um, Goldberg. Goldberg. So he says to me, he goes, Sid, do you mind taking a drop toe hold? I, I take a really good, I do a really good drop toe hold. I said, no, Dean, what we'll do is this. You'll come in the ring. I'll power bomb you. I'll get a victory. I'll have the ref give another sign. Then I'll power bomb you again. And we'll get another victory. And when we walked away from that, Savage said, man, that's, I love that, man. You know, because you, sometimes you have to put people like that into place. Overall, I know the smart marks really like him, but he was one of the most boring wrestlers to watch. Oh, know. my God, he was horrible. No personality in yeah. his matches. Well, what, what do you, I don't even think he had a match in WWF. Yeah, they, they, they made him an agent pretty fast. So he was too short. <laughs> yeah, well, bro, let me tell you, having been around big guys in WCW, there was definitely, I don't even know what the word would be, there was always a, we were in the WWE, we're better than you type attitude with some guys. And there was definitely a, well, I'm taller than you. Therefore, I'm bigger right. star. I'm better than you kind of thing, you know. And I uh, had a conversation and, with Nash one time about this. Right. And I told him, I said, Kevin, I go, you got to understand. Like when you talk about these guys are so small, I go, bro, you're, seven, you're looking through the eyes of a seven-foot person. Right. So you're, you're, uh, you're, I go, don't try to normalize your view. 
Right. You know, he's saying you're, you're like, look, right. in my he, view, he, these guys are not that small because he, I'm like the average size. I'm in the middle of all these guys. From your view, yeah, they are, but you're seven feet tall. Yeah. Well, you know, so it's just a skewed way he, of looking at life, you know? We were having a conversation with other guys one day, and he actually said, well, you know, uh, when my son sees Ray Mysterio, you know, he thinks, wow, I'm bigger than him. I can kick his ass. And that's what most kids must be thinking. And I go, I don't think that's what kids are thinking. I think when kids say, see Ray Mysterio, they think, wow, that's the guy that does all that cool shit. That's what I think they're thinking, you know? But, you know. All you do is listen to the people when he worked. Yeah. That's and, what the fans are thinking. If you got, let me yep, go ahead. But let me tell you about Dean real quick. I have a lot of respect for Dean for this. The main reason is because when Ray broke into WCW, his first match was with Dean. And if Dean wanted to be bitter, and if Dean wanted to make sure that Ray didn't get a shit in or even look good, he could have done it. But I also think there was a part of Dean who always being small and probably being you know made fun of or being given good chances, he said, you know what, let's go out here and rip it. And, bro, they had such a great match that when they came back, this was Ray's Imagine, his first match ever in WCW. Nobody had ever seen him. First time they'd ever seen him. And the dress room gave him a standing ovation. But uh, Interesting. D- Correct me, d- correct and, me and, if and I'm wrong me, here. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Bro, to, to show, like, you know, like how good Dean was, right? right? So he was not a big guy, obviously, right? Right. Bro, didn't Paulie use him as, like, a bodyguard character? That would like stretch guys at ringside. Was, when, when uh, I don't know if he was he a, do that? I don't know if he was a bodyguard, but they did call him the shooter. He was in with uh, Benoit and Shane Douglas as the first triple threat. Yeah, I th- but I don't think he'd be like the guy in the ring. He'd be like on the outside of the ring. No, they he was teaming with Benoit. They were tag team. Oh, he did. Okay, yeah. all right. But I was, you know, but uh, but they did call him the shooter. Le- yeah, he could legitimately. Shoot. Do we have any? Are you there know, any and- ECW historians? ECW historian show. Yeah, so there's have. there's like four books on ECW for sure. Yeah, and so the other thing I wanted to say is, and as Conan's we all know, quoted in one of them. Actually. So and that, so as as you wanted to know that uh, he was, uh, as many people know, but let me bring this up. He's mega hilarious backstage, with very dry wit, like a sure. Stephen Wright. One of the funniest guys in the history of the business. Right. Yeah. yeah. Very well liked backstage. Yes. And. And this is when I first started to <clears throat> drive a little bit more with white guys because if you go with Latinos or other minorities, there's a good chance you're going to get lost. Somebody in the car doesn't have money and you have to end up paying for their <laughs> uh, You're going to be late for sure. So anytime that I drove like with Nash or Malenko, who were great wheelmen, you got there on time. You never got lost. They knew where all the good gyms were. They were like, you know, it was... It was but Malik was a great wheel man. He was like uh, uh, Eddie and Benoit. There was a wild Jericho's with them. Remember? Um, 